Yes, that is because we are live with the community and we've got a focus on Copilot today. We are ready for takeoff, everybody. Welcome to the November 2023 Power Platform Community Call. My name is David Warner and I am your humble host for the day. Let's take a look at what we're going to talk about today, what we're going to see. We're going to talk about some community resources. We're going to take a look at some community samples specifically related to Copilot. And then we are going to have our group picture time with Together Mode. And then we're going to have two two action-packed piloted demos of the day. First one by Natalie and Keith. It's going to be 24 days of festive learning with Power Apps and Copilot. And then the one and only Shane Young is here to speak about the love language using Copilot. So we're looking forward to that. First, though, let's take a look at some resources that are available to each and every one of you in the community. We've got videos, plenty of videos. We all know we love to watch videos, whether they're short, whether they're long. We love to get involved in the community and learn more, and we do that with videos. So we've got plenty for you. You can check them out at ak.ms slash community slash videos. We've also got a LinkedIn group for discussions and updates. We've got open source tooling. We've got sample galleries, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Those community samples, Power Platform samples, Power Platform prompts. You can get access to all these things, and again, they are all free, all available to each and every one of you, completely at no cost. And all you got to do is remember ak.ms slash community slash home will take you to all those resources. Now, as you watch today, you may think, I got some cool stuff I want to show off. And we want you to. We absolutely welcome each and every single person in the community to demo on this call. Now, don't get overwhelmed with thinking that it has to be something like a flux capacitor making time travel possible. Nope, we'll worry about that in the future. <laughs> See what I did there? Anyways, everybody is welcome to present. If it's something you know you saw that you like, if it's a new feature, if it's even an old feature, maybe that you feel like needs to be revisited and shared with the community because it's useful and powerful and you found a way to use it, we welcome each and every one of you. All you got to do, fill out that form, ak.ms slash community slash request slash demo, and we will absolutely help you and get you scheduled on the call. And let's just mute everybody else here. All right. Very good. Now, let's talk about some sample and badges that are available to everybody in the community. Since we've got to focus on Copilot today, we wanted to remind everyone, and I know it's been more popular lately. I've been seeing all those PRs flying. The Power Platform Prompts repo is one of our newer sample repos that are available for you to consume as well as contribute to. Uh, as April has said in the past, we know, and we're going to learn about today, you got the wide world open to you for these Copilots. But where do you start? Sometimes it's a little hard to determine. And I know we're going to get some help today from Shane and the rest of the crew, but this is a great place to start as well. AK.ms slash power platform prompts. It is absolutely an easy way to get involved in the community with contributing. And you may also want to manage those, kind of have a way to organize them. Uh, this is a app that was created by April that is available to you. Power, uh, power, excuse me, power, uh huh, yeah, prompt manager app. So many P's today uh, that allows you to organize it for your organization. So definitely take advantage ak.ms slash prompt manager. Now, as you're getting involved and you want to know more about the ways in which you can contribute, perhaps you've got some questions. We have our sharing is caring. Uh, initiative and program here to help. We've got some videos we recorded. I'm setting up office hours this week that is going to start at the beginning of the year so you can pop in, ask questions. You don't have to invest an entire hour, hour and a half if you want to watch the videos and then ask questions. We're trying to find ways to make this more scalable for everyone uh, to get involved, to help out, and to be there for one another. So we're looking for innovative, innov in <laughs> it is a day, innovative ways to talk today about the things that we love and want to share and help each other with. And then once you do contribute to the community, well, we've got our community recognition program here for you. Powered by Credly, absolutely free, badges aplenty. We just got into November, so we've got some new slice of samples badges. It's the season of getting. These are badges that are only available for the next two months, and you can get them by contributing to the community. All you got to do is submit a sample, uh, submit a documentation update for that season of getting. We are tracking you each and every week, and we've got a number that are going to be going out today. Uh, I'm on vacation the next couple of weeks, but I'm still proud processing these because I love the community so much. So make sure you get involved, ask questions. We do need you to opt in though, if you are not already registered and you can do that by going to ak.ms slash community slash recognition. All right. Well, what do we have next? Well, it is that optional picture time. All right. So everybody get those fantastic faces 
open on your cameras and I am going to pull over. Hopefully it works because yesterday it was not. So if we have to, we can go with, ah, it's working and it's clear and it's awesome. All right, get this set up here. Looking great, everybody. Give me just a second. All right, got some more room. Anybody want to join? We got some more. I know this over 300 people there. Come on, everybody. Shit, turn those cameras on. It is okay. All right, we got some more filling in. Let's go wave to the community. Woohoo! Happy Ignite Day, everybody. Looking fantastic. Thank you for sharing. You are the best part of this community and what makes it happen. So thank you all for being here. All right, let's stop that. Let's get this moved over and let's move on. So, all right, folks, we've been clear for takeoff. that's right, you heard the captain, we are clear for takeoff. We're gonna move into co-pilot mode and we're gonna begin with Natalie and Keith who are gonna show us a very cool solution for 24 days of festive learning with Power Apps and co-pilot. I don't wanna spoil it, but there's lots of ways that you're gonna be able to use this. Uh, so definitely pay attention. Hey guys. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you Let's very much. All right. Okay. Uh, can we see the screen okay? Yep. Looks good. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Over to you, Nat. All right. Hey guys. So I had an idea to, to put out a sample as an advent calendar. And I started Googling like, hey, how do I do an advent calendar with Empower Apps? And I found Keith's sample that he did last year, that's this year being used for a session, festive session type of event. Can you mention the full name, Keith? Uh, yeah, it's the Festive Tech Calendar. And it was, uh, yeah, last year that I published that. That's the one. Yeah, so, so I actually found his sample. And I was like, wait a minute, I can use that, but I don't want to just copy paste his, his code in it without his permission and without him uh involved in it so i reached out to keith like hey keith would you be interested in joining uh to create a christmas advent calendar or a holiday advent calendar and from there to do a 24-day festive learning type of app so each day has a screen behind it and each day has a new tip tip trick video blog post series we feature shane young april dunham uh, and a few others, uh, maybe just as an intro, Keith, if you can show the very first day, just so that yeah. people can see what the app does. Great. Okay, so, let's check out day one. Yeah. So it's a 24-day advent calendar, and we've also incorporated Copilot, and you can ask Copilot things, but Keith will be demoing that in, in a bit. So every single day features something, and, and I wanted to highlight on the very first day uh, Lewis's blog because he does 365 blogs daily and I figured people would want to learn about that and of course we feature chain. So we, with this advent calendar uh, we are publishing it as a sample. It's being published as we speak. The pull request has been done and you can actually see the functionality on how this app works and you can learn uh, by opening it and and we really try to get this out there before December 1st so you can use it as both an advent calendar throughout the whole December and after that also check out the code and how we did all of this so um let me think what else can I tell you about that so we did add a uh, copilot as I mentioned we did add real life use cases so we made it now as an advent calendar, but it can be a 30 day onboarding type of app. It can be daily recipes. You can add free move days. So, so there's, there's a lot of possibilities out there. So why don't you Keith show us how the code works for this app? Yeah, sure thing. Thanks, Nat. So, yeah, as Nat said, I created uh, something quite basic. This was a, a Canvas app last year for the festive tech calendar. So I'll bring uh, I'll bring this one up. So this was really just to have a small Canvas app that had some very reusable code, very generic, uh, rather than authoring 24 separate screens and having lots of multiple screens. It was just about having reusability of this main calendar screen. When we click on one of the uh, the windows, 
it actually opens up there and then displays for that window. And then you can get blocked if you're not yet at that date as well. So if you try and go in the future, it wouldn't open that day. So this was almost like an exercise in making reusability. Uh, and for each one of these days, I'll just open this. This was the original one that Nat mentioned there. So you can go to each day and all it does is use the same template screen, but just swap out the assets like the image and the text. So fairly straightforward. So if we go to the, the new one, this really does have authored screens because as Nat mentioned, we've got pointing to Lewis's blog, uh, Shane's YouTube channel uh, and many more as well. If we look at the uh, this, which is really just a gallery for the 24 days, you could do a, an advent calendar, which can be jumbled. So part of the fun is looking for where that day number is. But this one we've just kept in order so you can just work the way along. And if we have a, a quick look at the power effects for this, so we've got a few things where we just set some variables. What, what is the day? We try and keep it generic to grabbing this year as well. Uh, I won't go through and find detail, but uh, we've got like a debug date of the 8th on here as well. And then when we decide if it's okay to open that day, we just have a switch here and then we choose which screen that we navigate to. So if I try and go ahead, this has got a dummy uh, debug of pretending it's the 8th of December. If we try and go ahead, you will get blocked. But you can check the current day and any previous days, which in this case is up to the 8th. And there's another great example of Lisa's right there. Um, so great, anything else to, to show just there, Nat? Yeah, uh, why don't you give us a short demo on the co-pilot portion of the app? Perfect, great idea. And another good idea to let me do the live demo with Copilot as well. Thanks, Nat. So <laughs> let's open up the Copilot in the bar. Now, uh, Nat's done a lot of this code. Really, you know, the, the, the clone of the original app was just the bare bones, but uh, Nat's added, again, we'll go to the Copilot, things like the use cases, how the app works. We worked on this together, what the buttons do. So again, when you take this and make it your own or want to play with it, you can see what's going on. And also just a mention to some of the contributors who've added content as well. Uh, again, mostly Nat and myself for the dev side of things, but so many people have contributed uh, really good articles and blog posts too. So if I open up just here on the co-pilot. Okay, so let's try something in here. What does this app do? Let's try this. So I believe the structure behind this, there's, there, are, there is a collection of data that this is pointing to, but some of this will analyze what the code's doing, what the app is doing as well. So if we go further up here, so it mentions it's an advent calendar, uh, the kind of approach used, it does mention some of the power effects as well. So uh, let me try another prompt. Let's try how is the app structured? Again, we'll give this a few seconds. But yeah, in all the testing, it seemed pretty robust so far. So fingers crossed. So just also let anybody know, if you import this app into your own environment and you want to use Copilot, make sure your environment is in the US located. You won't be able to change it, so you need to have a US located environment and in order to use copilot i even had to move my sample to a different environment and so it wouldn't work for me so that's one of the key notes in uh when importing this sample yeah that's a great point that's caught me out before too so a great uh, we mentioned the structure here consists of a gallery so on and so on so yeah so far so accurate uh, looking good again mentions of some of the the formulas as well so yeah i think that's a quick demo of the copilot um nat i'll pass back to you yeah, so as Keith mentioned, we did uh, we did reach out to Kat, Lindsay and Craig, who are also here on this call, and they've been awesome in helping gather some uh, some of the more blog posts and videos. And we we just really tried to grab uh, any videos or, or any blog posts or any articles that that really helped us in learning within the Power Platform. So we did want to share that out to not just make it a sample app with an advent calendar in it, but also make it a festive learning together with Copilot, uh, hence the name. And um, I, I think that's pretty much it about it. So I did also add in music. It's at the bottom of the screen right now. It's royalty free, so you're welcome to use it, or at least according to Google it is. 
And uh, yeah, that's it. So Keith, where, where can somebody find the sample? Yep, that's great. If you go to the um, Power Platform samples, again, that did a great job of uh, getting this submitted uh, quite quickly because this only came about in the last couple of weeks or so. So, uh, yeah, if I remember correctly, I think it may be under the samples uh, here or at least on the, the GitHub page as well. It will be, yes. Fantastic, great. So that's in progress. So, yeah, very soon should be here available, just like many other good samples, such as this KPI use case right here. <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, and up until the time it gets posted, uh, I know that David can post a link in the chat of my GitHub repo that already has it. So if you want to get it before it gets into the PMP samples repo, you're welcome to grab it from my own GitHub. Fantastic. Awesome. Awesome, both of you. Thank you. So uh, keep, keep this up for a second, uh, Keith. I think also if you all go to adoption.microsoft.com, we've got our global solution sample gallery there you can access. It'll get there. Everybody's been busy with Ignite, so there's been a little delay in getting it processed. Uh, and as they mentioned, it's just come together in the last couple of weeks. I, I do love what you've done here. Now, obviously, you've themed it for something that's you know thematic to the season for folks. But I think the point is very valid and, and um, useful in understanding that you can use this for any kind of Canvas application, uh, no pun intended, uh, specifically for like a 30 day of learning, whether it be onboarding, whether it be trying to provide instructional information. I also think that it's a great way to show gratitude for those that are either in your organization who have done work that you're wanting to share, whether it be internal blogs or whether it be external, right? Letting people know that you appreciate what it is that they've contributed to the internal community or external community, and then being able to share that. It really does a great job of, you know, that circle of life that we have within the community that helps us show appreciation, giving back, appreciation for giving back, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a great way to do that. So please definitely take advantage of this. There's lots of use cases beyond just the way that they're presenting it here now. Uh, lots of creativity that you could use it for to help learn and again, show gratitude for those that have contributed to the communities of any variety. So awesome. Thank you very much. And thank you, Craig and Lindsay and Kat and everyone else who has contributed to this, including all that they're featuring, right? Because it would be possible or useful without everything that everyone's contributing. So thank you all. All right, let's move on to Mr. Young, Mr. Shane Young on speaking AI's love language using Copilot. You want me to, to talk? I don't know. You're not, I don't know if you're familiar or comfortable with speaking in front of a crowd, but I, I have faith in you. I think you can do it. All right, I'll make it up as I go along. So, <laughs> hello everyone. Welcome to a little bit of fun with, um, you know, Copilot here. Like, we just want to kind of talk a little bit today about Copilots, talk about, you know, what's different, what's same, and just try to kind of get you guys thinking more in this way, right? Like, I, you know, I'm a little nervous here going after Natalie and Keith. They did a great job. So, hopefully, I can, uh, you know, keep the bar where it needs to be. All right. Yeah. And as Miss Mice put in chat, as long as I don't need to pronounce anyone's name. So, all right. So real quick, you know, you guys all know who I am, I think. Right. But Shane Young, hi. I've been an MVP since 2005, which, you know, I started when I was like 13. So I'm not really old. I'm still young. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, there's my contact info. If uh, any of you need to get a hold of me, I'm always happy to try to answer things and whatnot. Um. Also, just a shameless promo, I've got a bunch of co-pilot classes I'm writing right now. So if you're interested in finding out about those, go to training.powerapps91.com slash pages slash coming soon, and you can sign up to get notified when those classes come out. I got the free ones will hopefully be done. The first free one should be done this month, and I'm going to start uh, running those out the door. So, okay, that's enough of that. All right, so co-pilot, geez, old Pete's, right? Um... I think last I heard there was 155 of them, though I'm certain Microsoft's probably announcing 50 more of them at noon today. So, you know, this will continue to grow. But I kind of put all these logos here to drive the chaos because I think it is chaotic, right? Because when you think about like you want to, you want Copilot just to be one thing, but it, but it's not. It's, it's hundreds of things at this point, and I think that's important because as you start to go down this journey, it's really overwhelming, and it's also a little tough because you kind of have to talk to each one a little bit different. So 
Today, instead of talking about like how to talk to specific ones, we're going to talk about some generic guidance around talking to them uh, as they go. So, but yeah, you know, if you think about it, right, if we got Power Apps, so, you know, you can create an app or a table with it. You can use it to edit an app. Users can use it to interact with their data. Um, I think five minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, Microsoft just announced that now you can, you're even going to be able to use it with your apps without even adding it to your apps, like lots of stuff there in Power Apps. Power Automate, we can use it to make flows. We use it to edit flows. Um, as of 20 minutes ago, you can now also use it with desktop flows. So like they're going to show some examples of like writing code and stuff with it on the desktop flows. Very cool stuff. Um, process mining. So, so I know we, most of you being the COE of, or sorry, being part of the community, you're probably pretty aware of the COE toolkit, right? It's, it's like kind of a starting point, I think, for everyone on the Power Platform to understand what's going on. One of the cool things is on the Power Automate side, they're now going to use Copilot to kind of be able to better understand what's going on in your flows and like understand like the runs, which ones have failed, and start to kind of replace, not replace, augment some of that COE functionality with Power uh, Automate um, flow capabilities there. So goodness gracious. Power BI, it can write quick measures for me. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch more coming in the Power BI space, let users interact with their own data. You know, I'd say in the grand scheme of things, Power BI is a little bit behind the rest of them, but that's all right. Um, Power Pages, how many of you are using Power Pages, right? I, I don't, I'll be honest, right? We've we got some really smart people here at Power Apps 911 that do Power Pages work, but I don't. But I got in there uh, yesterday and I was just shocked at how much it can do with Power Pages, right? Like, yes, it, it has a wizard to get you started and to edit your site, but as you're going through it, like there was just all of these, it's it's basically inserted in every nook and cranny in Power Pages. Insane. Um, we also then Power Virtual Agents. So let me be the first ones to tell you, because you know, now we're 22 minutes into the announcements. I love the timing of this, right? The announcements came out, but they haven't, none of you've had time to read them yet. So ha ha. Um, but so we're now going to, Power Virtual Agents is kind of morphing into Copilot Studio. So you're going to be able to use, you know, kind of the same way like we talked about, like with Chat GPT, creating your own GPTs now. You know, think about, um, you're going to be able to now use Copilot Studio to, kind of build P PVA uh, things, but you're going to be able to do so much more. Like, so you're going to be able to extend Microsoft Copilot, and you're going to really start to see that PVA, which is now called Copilot Studio, is really going to become kind of the center of the Copilot's world when it comes to customizing them and doing more with them. And just building chatbots like we always have, but being able to build our chatbots to do a lot more smart things on their own. So. Really, really cool stuff. So there you go. There's a bunch of the co-pilots. Okay. So when it comes to the co-pilots, what is the same? The first thing that's the same, you know, is they're all built with OpenAI's large language model under the hood, right? So ChatGPT, right? We all know what that is. That is released by OpenAI. It runs on their large language model. Well, it turns out that you know Microsoft and OpenAI have a partnership, and so all the co-pilots are using some form of that OpenAI under the hood. Um, Bing Chat, which they're now going to rename to Copilot, right? Like we're going to see how many times we can say the word Copilot. I know, but <laughs> renaming that one—that's using the OpenAI pieces under the hood. So a lot of uh, a lot of that, right? All these co-pilots—they kind of have that same foundational element. Also, one of the great things about um, Copilot is, you know, Microsoft's commitment to responsible AI. So these Copilots, they need to honor security. They need to take care of your data and understand about privacy. Um, they are all what Microsoft calls grounded, right? So they all kind of have their own rules. And that's one of the challenges sometimes with these Copilots, right? Is yes, you think, well, I'm just, I got a prompt. I should be able to just say whatever I want. But if, like, if you go to the Power Apps uh, co-pilot for creating a table and say, write me a blog post, it's just going to tell you to go pound sand, right? Like it, it, it doesn't do that type of thing because they've grounded that one to say, hey, you can only do these things. Use your co-pilot, use your OpenAI smarts to do, but just do these five things or just do these 10 things. 
And I think for some people, that is one of the challenges of Copilot, right? Like, so if I'm in the Copilot for app makers, it's like, yay, yay, I say all these things and it builds me a table. But if I'm in Copilot for Power Automate and I tell it to build me a table, it doesn't know what I mean because each one is grounded separately. So just kind of keep that in mind as you go through these is that, you know, they all are a little bit different, even though they're all kind of built from the same foundation. But the goal of all of them is to make you more productive. And so what is different, right? Each one, it's that grounding. Each one has got its own super fires, super powers, not super fires, right? I've caught David's inability to speak apparently. Um, but they're all built with a very narrow purpose. They all show up in different ways. You know, if you think about like the Power Apps one, it is front and center when you go to the Power Apps homepage. But if I go looking like when I went looking for the one in Power BI, I had to go through like 12 screens to figure out where they had hidden the thing. You know, they like to just kind of show up in different places. In your Power Pages, they're everywhere. Like they're just all over and you just never can do. So with that being said, the thing that I want to drive home, right, it's a very long build up to the actual topic of the talk, right? <laughs> Um, is you've got to start working to speak Copilot's love language. I've been playing for months on how to help people learn this, right? Because, I mean, I get it. You guys are in a community call on a Wednesday afternoon. You are very smart people that are actively learning. But for every one of you, there's a million other people who are not, not looking to engage and learn. And so we've got to help them understand how to talk to these Copilots. And so the, one of the ways I've kind of come up with is, you know, you need to think about this, like this is something you've done before. You know, if you back way up to like, you know, those early 20s, right? Like one of the things I had to learn how to do was go to a bar and meet people, right? Like, and so I would go into the bar and I'd see a, a pretty person and I'd be like, hey, um, you know, what's your sign, right? And they'd throw a drink in my face because that was a stupid pickup line, right? And so, all right, well, that doesn't work. And so next time I go in there and be like, Hey, come here often, boom, smack the face. All right, that doesn't work, right? Like I had to iterate through these problems until I eventually learned that I just said, hi, my name's Shane, what's yours? That got me into the conversation, right? That started the conversation. And from there I could screw it up and get slapped on my own. But, but that was the first step, right? So the same iterative way that I had to learn to do that is how we need to be thinking about working with AI, right? Whether it's Copilot, ChatGPT, Claude, Bard, if you're really bored, because Bard is terrible. But anyway, you know, whatever one of these ones you're learning, like, you've just got to learn how to talk to it. And so these are skills that you have done um, a lot, right? Yeah. So yeah, you guys didn't know you were getting dating advice, but I get it. Um, and really, you know, another thing that really drives all of us is the fact that we are... Um, you know, we're really good at Google, right? Let's just be honest. How many of you are in your tech career because you're better at Google than most of the people that you know, right? It's okay. I'll admit it, right? That is how we all got here. And so it's the same thing. We want to be the people that are best at AI, right? If you back up to 2005, I think it was 2005, 2004, whatever year I started Power Apps 911 or SharePoint 911, right? I had a SharePoint 911 before I had a Power Apps 911. Don't ask. Um, but the whole reason I started that business is I was just better at Google than everyone else in the space. And so I could answer more questions faster. And I turned that into a business model. This is going to be the same thing. You guys have got to start working on learning how to prompt these co-pilots. Okay. And the number one piece of advice, like if you want to just leave right now, the number one piece of advice is you got to practice. Okay. So, just like there was no perfect pickup line, because funny enough, come here often actually worked for me one time. I cannot tell that story right now, but if you ever catch me in a bar, I will happily tell you how that line did work once. Um, but so just like there was no perfect pickup line in the bar, everyone was situational, everyone changed. There's no perfect prompt, right? Like when you see these ads and things where people are like, I'm going to teach you to be the perfect prompt in the or right? This is how you write the perfect prompt. It might be the perfect prompt for one given scenario. Great, but there is no perfect prompt for every scenario. So you've got to, you know, continually to refine, try, iterate. Even once you think you have a perfect one, try something different. Also, be polite, right? This could be dating advice too. <laughs> um, but 
I, I have no proof of this, but I promise in my heart, I really believe that when I ask, you know, ChatGPT and Copilot, when I say please and thank you, I just feel like it, it tries a little bit harder to give me the right answers. Okay, so be polite. The next piece of advice, oh, all of you write this one down, right? And tell everyone, you know, there are no stupid questions. There are stupid questions in real life. I, I, I believe that. But when it comes to talking to AI, there is not. I, I can tell you already right, today, people all the time ask me like, so Shane, what would happen if I asked Copilot blah, blah, blah? I don't know. I don't care. Even if I do know, I'm not going to tell you. Just go ask Copilot. Because unlike when we were in the bar and we, you know, if I asked a dumb question, I got smacked, which I probably deserved, so I'll be honest, right? Copilot's not going to smack me. Copilot is not going to, um, you know, tell me that I'm dumb. Copilot is not going to make fun of me. Copilot is not going to tell my friends that I asked a dumb question. Copilot's just like, hey, I'm not set up to do that. You want to try something else? Right? So stop fretting about what to ask it, how to ask it, all of these things, right? Like, there's, there's no reason. Just try. What's it going to do? Say no? Who cares? Um, you know, like, it was a great example. You know, you saw uh, when Keith was doing his demo and he just asked it, like, hey, what is the structure of this app? Right? At some point, Keith was just sitting there. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to ask this thing if it knows what the structure of the app is. And, and it did, right? I'd never used that prompt before. I didn't realize it could do that. So there you go. I learned something because I was not smart enough to just try it. Just ask it, um, ask it what's going on. No, oh, and I love that you guys are just blowing up chat. Everything I say seems to trigger a new, uh, new chat thread. So if you're not watching chat, well, a good because you're paying more attention to me. But but they're kind of funny over there. So anyway, ask the questions. It'll be okay. All right. So speaking of asking questions, when you do ask questions, right? Be specific. Your prompts need to be specific. So like you can see here, I've got an example of a lame prompt. Build me an app to manage inventory. If you've pumped that into Power Apps Copilot, it'll do it. But if instead of asking it that and then being annoyed with how dumb it the output was, because the output will be pretty lame on that first prompt, look at the second one. Please build me an app to manage inventory. We sell washers and dryers, create columns for item name, SKU, location, build date, and color. The color choices are white, black, and almond. Locations are shelves, flow, and overflow, right? Like, that is going to get you a much better output. And just to show you, so, like, there is what that first one got me, right? Like, it, yep, yep, that's an inventory table. It's got an ID, a product name, a quantity, a price, and a category. And the categories are called category one or category two. Like, yeah, it did what I asked. That's that's not useful, but I didn't ask it. A, I didn't give it a useful prompt, so that's what I'm kind of left with. Whereas the other one, that bigger prompt, look at that. The example items are washers and dryers. They made up a skew pattern. I could have told it a skew pattern, but it made one up for me. Locations, it's a choice column. There's a build date, color, it's a choice column. Boom! It is already built all of that for me, and so that is much closer to what I wanted, right? Simple prompt versus great prompt. Um, and you know, and, and you're thinking, well, Shane, I'm never gonna use this, right? I've been building Power Apps for 10 years. Like I would never build an app with it. I mean, you can you could go that route, but let's be honest, right? Like, yeah, today it builds a single table app. It doesn't even do all the column types, it does most, but not all. You know, you could, you can poke holes in what it does today. But by spending a little bit of time with that, I'm learning, and as it continues to get better, because they keep adding column types, they're going to add relationships at some point. They're going to add more advanced stuff. Right? This is going to continue to grow. By learning it now, I can continue to learn and grow with it. So when it does catch up with me, because I'm the ultimate power app builder, I'm going to be there instead of being like, oh, crud, I should probably start learning now and being behind. Right? We want to get our 10,000 hours in. So messing with it today, even if you don't really want to use it, very helpful. The second thing that I will mention, though, is that even when I don't want to use it for its app, I really enjoy using it to create me tables because not only does it create me a table, but it can also put in the sample data. And so when it starts to put in the sample data, right, and creates me this table with all this data, so when I need to do demos, 
I've got this great repository to to demo from, right? Or when I need to, um, um, you know, like one of the things that I teach in my classes is like when we're building an app, I always want some sample data in the table because it's easier to build galleries and controls and things if you've got three or four records. And so using this to build the table and getting those three or four records, it just keeps me from, you know, making up item names and SKU numbers and things, which we'll worry about later. But but having some sample data makes your app building process go a lot easier. So I really recommend using it for that case. Okay. What do I do next? So another thing that I want to make sure that you guys are doing enough of is using the suggestions and the examples. All right. Like so over here on the right, this is on the side of Power Apps, right? Like I can say add a button. I can say add an email screen. But the thing that I would tell you, like with add a button, you know, so if I say add a button, it just adds a basic button, okay? And then I can say change the color to red. What happens if I tell it to change the color to red? It's going to change the color property to red. What is the color property? It's the font color, not the button color. So I need, I actually want to say change the fill to green, right? And so those are the little things, the little nuances that you're going to have to learn. You're going to be frustrated when you say add a button and make it green and make the color green and the font turns out to be green. Like you're like, well, that's not what I meant. And so that was my fault for a poor prompt. I need to be better at prompting and say, oh yeah, it wants to change the fill property. Now, and eventually Copilot will get smarter about those type of things. But today it's very literal. And so it said, you said change the color. There's a color property. I'm going to change the color property. And that wasn't actually what I meant. So a little bit of knowledge goes a long way or having a green Mr. Grinch. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, that's that's the Power App one. Um, over here, like when I do create it with Copilot, so this was um, inside of what we now call Copilot Studio. You know, here it's like, hey, I'm going to build you a topic. I forget what they call them now. They call them something different. But it's giving you some examples of topics that it can build. And for me, I am not, I'm, I'm moderate at Power Virtual Agents today, um, but using this to like click on one of those and see what it builds, right? Like that's going to do the best case of showcasing what's possible, which is going to kind of get you, um, get you focused in there, right? So using that, um, you know, one of, this is back to this purple one here. This is Power Pages. So Almost everywhere inside of Power Pages, you click on something and there's a little co-pilot icon here, right? So I clicked on the text on my web page and it's like, hey, do you want me to rewrite that for you? You want me to change that tone to you, make it shorter, make it longer? Like, I need this on the Power Apps 911 website. I am not the best website builder in the world. And so I really wish that uh, Wix is where we host our website. You know, I really wish that they had a uh, this type of capability where I could just click on something and be like, hey, make this sound less dumb. Right, like, that's what I that's what I see all these things say. You know, Shane was an idiot. He wrote bad stuff. Let's make it better. Um, so just kind of think about that. And then yeah, and then over there, there's Power Automate, same type of thing, right? Like just check out the examples. All right, so this is a super nerd trick. I should have told you in the beginning that I was going to show you a super nerd trick. But so the Copilot inside of Power Apps, right? This is that Copilot control inside of there. Did you know that you can turn on monitor and see what it's doing? So I said, hey, how many different TV shows are there? And look, it figured out that that means, you know, um, that it needed to do a select count distinct from that my table as number of TV shows. Like, like it, it wrote that T-SQL. Like, and so this to me is very interesting because now I can give it a prompt, see what it's generating, right? So there you go. That became that. and then. I can see that the summary, the answer, look, it got back seven and then it spit it out of there, right? So yeah, so I don't know, maybe I wasn't supposed to show you guys this, but I'm gonna show you more because I think you're interested in this one, right? Like if we go over here, and so if you go into Power Apps, do, 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 and then you go down here to my sales data one, we'll edit this app, and so then, <laughs> Thank you, Keith. I appreciate that. Um, you know, if I was a better presenter, though, this, this screen would have already been open. So what happened was I got a bunch of updates. I had to reboot this morning. It's very sad, right? But so this Copilot control, all I did was connected it to 
uh, the sales data. Remember when you connect one of these copilot controls that you give it a data description, this just helps make the questions make more sense to it. And so then now with that there, right, then we just click on tools, you go to open monitor. Okay, monitor's running. And now if we hit play, what did I even ask it? I forget. How many different TV shows are there, right? So if we do how many different TV shows are there? And we ask the question, we're going to get to working on it for a few seconds here. Come on, I just said a few seconds. There are seven different shows. All right, so give me the same answer twice. And so look, if you look in here, you just go here, formula data doesn't have anything, but data data. And so then down here, right, you can start to go through and then there's the body, right? So there's the query it wrote, there's the result, there's what answered. <laughs> yes, anytime you, you demo uh, Copilot or AI in general, right? Like you gotta be brave, which all right, you guys wanna hear my little random note? So one of the things that I think will be real interesting as we go into Copilot and AI time, right? And so every Bob, Susie and whatever, try to start teaching this stuff. Teaching AI is really hard, right? Because every time I ask it a question, I like have to cross my fingers that it's going to do the same thing or do something similar or just not freak out. And so you have to really light on your feet to teach this stuff. And, and I think this is going to be one of the challenges. So you just watch when you start hearing about really bad co-pilot training, it's going to be because the average bear is not going to be able to teach this stuff. It's going to take uh, someone who's pretty good at uh, improv. So or in this case, I did a very narrow example. But anyway. And Shane, so, and Shane just yeah. going back to what you had said, right? The importance of context for Copilot is important. I know you and I were chatting quite a bit before the demo and before the calls and all that. But just because it's really important to underscore, I think, for folks, never assume Copilot knows what's already in your brain. Shane and I were joking about talking to our wives, or at least I was saying how I'll mention something to my wife and I'll have had a conversation in my head or a context in my head for five minutes before I mention it. And she's like, what are you talking about? Copilot's no different, right? Yes. It's like you need to give it context and awareness and landscape awareness and all that. Yeah, right. Like one of the examples I am using in my uh, chat GPT class, right? It's like you ask it, like, give me information about football, you know? And so being the silly American that I am, right? Like I'm expecting, you know, to tell me about how the Bengals are so much better than the Kansas City Chiefs. But it might be thinking, wait, did he mean American football? Did he mean European football? Right? Like there's all of this weirdness and all i had to do to your point was tell it was in my head and say hey answer this question about american football or answer this question about european football and i would have gotten what i wanted but you know without that context it's just not going to work um yeah and so now we're giving um you know so i gave dating advice david's giving uh you know uh spouse advice so this this, this, this show's got a little bit of everything it's a well-rounded call right we're here for everybody <laughs> you know uh, all right. So anyway, so I wanted you guys to see this because I just figured this one out yesterday when I was prepping for you uh, to do this um, because I'd found out how to do it another way, which I won't tell you about. But this was uh, my Microsoft just put it right in front of our faces. We just had to go look for it. And where this came into handy for me, if you are like me and you're an early adopter of this stuff, you know that there's still some rough edges. And so with those rough edges, you know, like I was getting some bad results. And so basically I could, I was asking my questions and when I was getting the wrong answers, I could go look at the data and be like, oh, it asked the wrong question, right? Like it's getting back the wrong data over here. So that's why this control is telling me the wrong thing because the database is giving it the wrong answers. Like I was able to kind of get a little bit, unpeel the onion a little bit further and realize, you know, get a more insight what's going on. So cheating is absolutely one of the ways that I think you guys can help yourselves learn this stuff faster. It's not cheating. It's just working smarter. So be a spy. Um, I also wanted you guys to see right, a little bonus tip here. I do the same thing with Dolly, right? So here you can see, I said, hey, create me an image of mostly white and black Bernie Doodle who's sitting cutely in front of a Christmas tree. Make the image look like a real life photo, right? That was what I typed in. And it gave me back a cute picture, right? That's an adorable puppy. <laughs> Buddy is not that cute, unfortunately. Um, but then I just said, hey, will you please share me the prompt you sent to Dali? And look, there it shows me what it turned my simple words into. And so if you're trying to get better at prompting for images, right? 
then there you go. Type in something and then say, hey, what did you send to Dali? And so now that I understand that that's what it's sending over, I bet you like if I was really annoyed that those twinkling lights were there, right? And now I could say, and make sure that the Christmas tree doesn't have twinkling lights. And all of a sudden now, you know, I'd be able to kind of backpedal it. But until you kind of understand that next tier of what's happening, sometimes it's harder to write those input tiers. Over time, with practice, looking, paying attention to little details like this, you're going to get better at this stuff. Okay? And that is just a really cute puppy. Like I, I want that dog. Don't tell Buddy, but I want, I want one of those. Act. Um... We're almost done here. I know I've been uh, rambling on for a while, but we're getting there. Um, so I can't stress enough. You all need to get your 10,000 hours. Get your 10,000 hours. And if you're thinking, well, Shane, I can't use Copilot at work, then go use Bing Chat, or now also called Copilot. Um, go use that to do personal stuff. Go use ChatGPT. Go use Dolly. Find something that causes you to have your aha moment of with chat GPT or with AI, generative AI, sorry, with generative AI in general, so you can start being excited and practicing more and more. I've got a whole slew of stories, right? Because this has been one of my goals for the last, you know, basically all year is trying to get the light bulb to come on for my friends and my coworkers. And so every one of them, I have a different story of, Finally, that thing that I made them get interested with, you know, um, my buddy Todd Clint, most of you probably know from the Share, SharePoint days, right? Him and I, he uh, he had to write a bunch of letters for his uh, PTO for school. And so I was like, hey, here's how to get ChatGPT to do this for you. And then he kind of wrote it. He's like, well, this is mediocre. Like, it doesn't help. I was like, because your prompt is mediocre. And so then Todd and I spent 10 minutes, I don't know, a little bit more than that working on getting it to sound like him, right? So we've fed it in some different samples of the way he would write. And we kind of described his personality. And lo and behold, you know, half an hour later, we are done. And it was able to pop off these letters and it sounded just like him and his, you know, witty, I don't know, how do you describe Todd? Like smart, but funny, sarcastic. I don't know. Like we developed his- Dad jokey? Dad jokey? Is that a- is that a- um, maybe I like Todd likes to use big words, but then make dad jokes. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it, it's, it's, uh, it was, it, it took a little bit to get there, but, but now it sounds just like him. And so you just got to kind of find the thing that, that gets there for you. The other thing to keep in mind when it comes to all this stuff. Um, so MIT put out a study like August, I think, but you know, like we all talk about the 10x developer, right? And we all talk about how AI is going to make us all amazing. And it is. But one of the things to keep in mind is that, you know, the people that are getting the most benefit from this stuff right now are the average people, believe it or not, right? Because if you're average and then you augment yourself with Copilot, you can go from average to superhero pretty quick, right? Like there's the, the jump is really fast because being average, you understand to ask them for the specific column types. You understand kind of what Dataverse is capable of, so you're not asking it to do things that it would never be able to do. Like you're, you're, you're able to kind of leverage what you do know to, and then extend, right? Whereas, you know, someone like, you know, uh, Natalie, who is a genius at this stuff, like, you know, she doesn't get as much benefit because she already knows how to do all the things. And so she's having, she, she's still getting benefit, don't get me wrong, but, but she, her growth from AI is not as powerful as someone who has a lower base, right? Like, so Keith would get a lot more because he's not as good as her. Uh -huh. All right, this is what happens. You pick on the other presenters. But so just remember that. Like, don't just go into this thing saying, um, you know, I've got to be really smart at this. But you do, if you know enough to be dangerous, this can make you really powerful. I guess the way I'm trying to say that. Final thought, um, you know, also just remember that this thing is uh, a, uh, this is a co-pilot, right? You're, it's not in charge. It's not here to replace you. It's not here to do your job. It's to help you do your job. It's here to make suggestions. It's here to help you refine your, uh, your content. It's, it is here to help you, but ultimately the output is on you 
not on, you know, you can't go back and blame Copilot for bad output, right? It, it, it's on you. So just keep that uh, going. And then the other last thing there, I kind of said a second, I'm going to say it again. You guys just need to use AI more. I don't know who you are. I haven't met you all, but I'm going to tell you, you're not using AI enough. Use it more, right? Like I, every night I use it to check my kid's homework, right? Like I just, he has this big old sheet of, um, you know, math problems. And so I just bust out chat GPT on my phone. I take a picture of the problem and say, is it right? And Boom, it's a, it, it can read the question, it can read his chicken scratch handwriting, and it can tell me whether or not he got it right. And if he didn't, I can say, hey, explain it to me so I can help him understand this, right? And then it's using it. So if a, as a parent, if you are challenged by your kid's homework, use AI, right? Find things that you can do for you. I just can't do that enough. So that is all the lovely things that I've got. <laughs> yeah, this my math is fun, but like here in the US, like we switched to some crazy common core math that is not as fun. And so a lot of us parents struggle. And so letting it do it, it really helps. But there's all my contact info. If I can do anything for you, um, please let me know. Check out the uh, coming soon if you want to take some of the AI classes. There'll be free ones. There'll be paid ones. Like I, I'm very excited about this whole Copilot, ChatGPT, Dolly. Like we're going to talk about Hugging Face. We're going to talk about Claude. We're going to talk about all of them a little bit. But I've got a lot of different things kind of in the pipeline there. So. Awesome, Shane. So uh, I'm going to bring back up slide here, but I did want to just chat one more thing with you while you're still live and hot on the mic. Um, you, you, I think you alluded to it on the call. There's a lot of fear, right? As Copilot continues its ascension into the air, see what I did there? Uh, there's a lot of fear, right, about Copilot taking my job, AI taking my job. I think I know a guy who said AI is not going to take your job. Someone who knows how to use AI better than you is going to take your job. Right. So uh, do you do you know that guy? Yeah, I think I've heard that uh, saying once or twice. I, I think there's about 10,000 of us that claim that we made up that uh, saying. So I don't know who uh, if the world we should ask ChatGPT if it can figure out who first said that. But yes, uh, ChatGPT right. will probably claim ownership of it at some point. So, yeah. I said that ChatGPT says. Anyways, that's the that's a valid point, right? So don't fear it as if it's going to take your job. Just embrace it and make it your best friend to the point of what Shane is saying, learn how to use it, make it your best friend, be, you know, let it be your partner on everything. That way you'll get to know it, whether it's, it's a variety of AI too, right? We've got co-pilots aplenty, but mid journey or chat GPT or all the other variety uh, of uh, AI helps you learn. And mid journey is a great one that I love for images because you can do so much manipulation within that particular engine in terms of the AI generation of the images. It's pretty powerful and you really start learning how to craft it, how to speak its language as Shane is saying. So Shane, thank you very, very much. Yeah, go get your 10,000 hours, David. All right, I am working on it. Yes, absolutely. So thank you to our three amazing presenters today, Natalie, Keith, and Shane. You are all rock stars. We really appreciate all that you are promoting and presenting in the community. And of course, go check out that sample, by the way, because it includes a whole bunch of other contributions from everyone in the community. Again, I cannot preach this enough. I'm very, very passionate about pointing the finger back at those that are doing well in the community. Uh, don't hesitate to do that. It is uh, paying it forward and it is a great way to make sure that you are showing appreciation for all that everyone else has been doing. By the way, I don't know if you all saw a few weeks ago, we had our business applications launch event. Uh, if you saw it, we'd love to get some feedback from you. Uh, so I'm going to put that link into the chat there. It looks like it didn't serialize well. And if you didn't, it is on YouTube, by the way. So I'll get that link corrected. Uh, but you can check it out. So once you check it out, actually jump into that feedback form and provide that information. We would love to uh, get some feedback from you on that. It influences future events and we would love to hear what you think. All right. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Eichel. Okay. Let's talk about some resources that are available to you. We've got a number of resources. Our community front door is going to give you the uh, entry door, if you will, to all the things that we see here, things like our Power Platform videos and samples, our community landing pages, where we've got forums uh, and opportunities for you to continue to collaborate with other members of the community. Don't hesitate to take advantage of that. We know we've got community calls aplenty. So we've got our weekly Microsoft 365 and Power Platform 
speakers call or Microsoft speakers call. Uh, we've got our AI hack winner coming up on Tuesday next week. So do not hesitate to check that out. Uh, that's going to be the grand prize winner of that. So it's going to be very cool to check out. Of course, you're on the monthly Power Platform call. We've got our office add-ins. We've got our sibling Microsoft 365 and Power Platform community development biweekly call along with the Viva Connections and SharePoint Framework. Uh, and you may be thinking, next week is Thanksgiving. Are we having a call on that day? Yes, you bet we are, because we are a global community. So don't hesitate to tune in there. We've got some fun stuff in store for that call, as always. You can get access to all these calls at ak.ms slash community slash calls. Download the ICS invites. Get them on your calendar. Folks, these calls are like a crystal ball. The what's new, what's now, what's next. So definitely check them out. You're able to see how everyone else in the world is using the technology that we love. It is invaluable. All right, we also have a Discord server, so we're with Cool Kids. If you want to get involved and chat in the variety of ways, it's a great way to collaborate uh, with kind of the world at your fingertips. It covers a number of topics all within one space. Uh, it is one of the fastest growing areas of our community. So I think we're getting close to 1,000 now. Definitely check that out. Please join that. It is absolutely free. And we, of course, want to hear some feedback. So if these calls are going well, even if you've already filled it out, let us know. Helps us let our management chain know that these are valuable to you. And having folks like Keith uh, and Natalie and Shane on are useful for you. So it allows us to get more invested into things like this for you in the community. Well, the recording will be available in 24 hours on the Microsoft 365 and Power Platform Community YouTube channel. You can check them all out at ak.ms slash community slash videos. Teams is going to tell you that the video is ready to download, but unless you're a Microsoft employee, it's a little liar. Don't try it. It'll just lead to tears, blue screens of death, and all the like. So go uh, subscribe at our YouTube accounts, and you will be let known as soon as it drops. You can also follow us on Twitter at m 36 p Uh-huh. That's coming back at M365PNP. Uh, see the latest updates on the LinkedIn. Otherwise, our next call will be in one month, December 20th, 2023. We look forward to everybody joining us at that point. We'll have a fantastic array of speakers. You can get, again, the invites at aka.ms slash power platform community call. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Enjoy Ignite. Have a wonderful rest of the week and weekend. Thank you for being the amazing contributors that you are.